All right, let's start with abortion. Uh, I guess we got a couple things on the table with abortion. There's a federal lawsuit that was filed by a drug company specifically in West Virginia. Where do we stand at this point? So last week there was a lawsuit filed against the new abortion law and uh, the company is making an argument that uh, because their drug is approved by the FDA that that should somehow preempt the West Virginia abortion law. We feel very strongly that that's wrong for a number of reasons. First, when the U.S. Supreme Court issued the Dobbs decision, they knew full well that over half of the abortions that are occurring today are chemically induced through drugs. Second, there's no provision within the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act dealing with abortion. So it's another example, and I've been pushing back against these type of cases for years where people try to reinvent what the authorities of these agencies uh, look like in order to drive their agenda. I think that the Supreme Court has been very clear that abortion is an issue left to the states. Uh, we think that the legislature designed uh, an initiative, a law consistent with the Constitution, consistent with Dobbs, and I think reflecting the will of the people. And a couple days ago, another lawsuit turned up, I guess the, the lone abortion clinic in West Virginia said, right. hey, you know, you guys are taking what business we used to have away should there happen to be an abortion needed, we can't perform it now. Where we stand there? Look, I don't think that that's a very credible challenge because at the end of the day, uh, once again, Dobbs and the courts have been very clear that states are going to have the ability uh, to regulate in this space. And uh, the West Virginia legislature you know, went through a process. They had a compromise uh, back and forth. And so uh, I think that the court decision uh, is reflected in the, the new law that you're seeing. So we think that these challenges are going to fall, that we're on very defensible grounds. I can't predict when and where that will happen, but I can say that uh, we like the position we're in to be able to defend this law. As the Attorney General of the state, I'm charged with defending a state law, and that's what we're doing here, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to get into court. That was kind of, kind of going to be my next question. Where are we in the process for both of these suits? Well, so they were, they were just filed. So the one related to the uh, drug maker, that was last week, and the one uh, going after the Board of Medicine, that was filed this week. I'm not even sure that we've been served on the uh, latter lawsuit. So uh, we're going to be meeting on that and trying to get our responses together in the upcoming days and weeks ahead. Last month you had a big win, a, uh, a district court upheld the uh, transgender athlete bill. Yeah. Talk about that if you would. Well, this is a huge win for the state of West Virginia, and I think it reflects common sense, and it's about basic fairness. We know that several years ago the legislature came out with a very simple proposition. Biological males should not play in these women's team sports. And some people criticized it at the time and said, oh, what's the nature of the problem? But the legislature actually proved prophetic because all of those can look, go back to the last summer to the NCAA Women's Swimming Championships and you see pretty clearly that what happens when you have biological males competing, it, it's unfair and in some sports it may uh, create safety issues for women. Certainly is very destructive of Title IX and the opportunities that women have had uh, to advance. So we're really pleased with this win uh, at the district court. This was a Democratic the appointed judge, uh, but I think that the law on this is very straightforward and, and we should have won. I'm glad we did win, but we're expecting the other side will appeal. It seems like everyone wants to resort to the court system, but the West Virginia Attorney General is going to always be there to defend the legal interests of the people. Sweet. Um, you want to talk about fentanyl? We run stories every day about overdoses and arrests and everything. What can be done to, to curb this tidal wave? Well, a lot can be done, and the federal government is utterly failing at its job, and that needs to change. So one of the announcements we made this week is I wrote a letter to Speaker McCarthy, and I've asked them to uh, bring uh, Tony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, for a hearing. And here's why. A lot of focus has been on Homeland Security. They've not been doing their job. It's been on the U.S. Attorney General. There needs to be more resources put in for fentanyl prosecutions. Quite frankly, we have some good U.S. attorneys here in West Virginia, but they need a lot more help. Not enough attention has been put on the U.S. Secretary of State, but if you look at the fentanyl problem, 
the base ingredients are in China, then they're ultimately shipped to the Mexican drug cartels, the products are packaged together, and then they make their way uh, over the border into the heartlands. And West Virginians are dying at an alarming rate, number one in the nation in terms of these fentanyl drug overdoses. It's a huge issue. One pill kills. We know we've heard of an increasing number of problems with it. Fentanyl is the number one cause of death for individuals between the ages of 18 and 46. That's a huge problem. That's why I've been pushing so hard uh, to have more spotlight on it, because the feds need to act. The feds also need to classify fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction. What else can we call it when it's the number one cause of death for so many of our young people? So I'm doing everything imaginable to draw more attention on it and to use our civil tools in order to make progress here. To piggyback on part of your last answer, how much do you think it would help if we just enforced the existing laws we have at the border? It would be the difference of night and day. The federal government is doing such a terrible job at our border. And sometimes people say, well, uh, Attorney General Morrissey, why are you focusing on immigration or border issues? And I say, because West Virginia feels the border crisis through the fentanyl epidemic in our state, because a lot of the illicit product is coming up through the southern border, making its way uh, to Harrison County, to Montegalia County, Marion, all across the state of West Virginia. And so we have to step up and fight back. And uh, I'm convinced that we can make a huge difference if the feds just do their job. But if they keep not doing their job, state attorneys general like myself and many others are gonna step up, we're gonna push, we're gonna fight, we're gonna do our own sets of investigation, and we're trying to protect and save as many lives as we can. In the last several months, you've been considering your political future. Yeah. Care to make an announcement today on 12 ah, News? Uh, I am very seriously considering uh, a run for governor or for Senate, and I'll leave West Virginia voters with this thought. When I announce uh, in the next 30 to 60 days, people are gonna have a chance to examine our record. And I think people will know that we have, by far and away, of all the folks looking, running for higher office, the best record, protecting innocent life, standing up and defending the Second Amendment, fighting federal overreach, uh, winning the Big Hope scholarship case, defending the integrity of women's sports on case after case after case, on issue after issue. We've stood up and we've acted, and I think that matters. West Virginia needs leadership. Someone who's going to step up and take uh, bold steps to help our state move to the next level. A lot of other people are going to talk about what they want. We actually have a really rich record of getting big things done, and that's what people can expect as we move forward. Tell me about the process of making such a huge decision. This, yeah. this must be just gut-wrenching. Well, look, you have a lot of conversations with people across the state in every county, and that's what I'm doing. I'm talking with people. I'm listening to what's on people's minds. And that's why I think the feedback has been, look, you've got the best record of anyone who's looking at any of these higher races. And I think that's true. And so they know that. So, well, how can your skill set best be utilized to help the state more? I'm in my third term as Attorney General, I'm in my 11th year, and I'm excited for a potential new challenge uh, in front of me. So, but I'm gonna do this right. You know, a lot of other people wanted to rush further, maybe they had less name ID, and I get that, but we've been busy doing our job, we've been doing it very well. Number one per capita opioid settlements in the country, a precedent setting agreement with all the counties and cities. We're making progress, getting things done, good things, a lot of goodness for West Virginia, and I'm gonna keep doing that, uh, but people should expect more in the next 30 to 60 days.